Now, our next presenter is Morgan. So can I get a quick show of hands of how many of you are either in high school right now or um, remember being in high school? <laughs> that's, you know, that's what I thought. Um, what about some adjectives that you would use to describe your high school experience? Just, just shout them out. Dreadful. Yes. Thank you. Long. Yeah. Forgettable. Yes. Useless. Useless. <laughs> there we go. All right. All right. So that's that's good. So um, that is the problem. Um, students are losing motivation. They're losing focus in high school because they don't see the point. And we're not adequately preparing them for a life after high school. So many of them are dropping out, and by many, I mean 7,000 every day. So I have developed a solution to this problem. <laughs> um, so the first thing is changing what we teach. Now, our current high school system, education system, was designed by industrialists from you know, last century. Um, and in order to be successful in a more industrial society and economy, you had to know basic reading, basic math, um, writing, maybe some like listening, following directions, skills, and that was pretty much it. But we have far moved past that. We are now 3D printing things. We have made huge advances in brain mapping, and we have self-driving cars. Um, but we're still here. We're still stuck in this framework of industrial um, economy. So Andy Greaves, who is an education researcher, said that a knowledge economy runs not on machine power, but on brain power. The power to think, learn, and innovate. Rather than having such an emphasis on facts and details and little events, <coughs> we need to shift that to learning skills and learning how to think and learning how to be innovative and ambitious. Now, according to dosomething.org, the dropout rate in, for high school students in 1990 was about 3%. And now it is 12.1%. That, to me, says that you know, students are no longer seeing what they're learning to be relevant or exciting enough to stay in high school. And they're making the choice not to. So Albert Einstein once said that education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. Now rather, as I said before, rather than having such a heavy emphasis on facts and dates and specific details of events, we need to shift that to more skill-based. Now, I can explain this <coughs> for example. Last year, I took biology. And before every test, like unit test that I would have, I would take my study guide home and I'd give it to my dad and I'd be like, Dad, like quiz me, I need to know this for tomorrow. And we would go through it until I felt like I knew the information well enough to do well on the test. And the next day would come, I would take the test, I usually did pretty well, but no matter how well I did, I forgot the information by the next week. And now I'm standing here, I can tell you, I, you know, I know what the mitochondria does and what, you know, the <laughs> nucleus is, you know, the brain of the cell or whatever, right? But I don't really, you know, I'm not, I haven't grasped that. This year, since September, October, I've been learning how to stand in front of an audience and give a presentation. And you could call this presentation my final assessment, that, you know, this is what we've been working towards all year. But my ability to stand up here and speak in front of you will not end after this presentation. I will use this in so many ways for the rest of my life, in job interviews, and in college, and large presentations. So that is where we need to be headed. Another thing is memorizing versus understanding. Now, just because you're able to give an answer to a question doesn't mean that you understand what the question was. So, for example, another kind of test example, we all know what vocab words are and what studying vocab is and having vocab tests and, you know, knowing the definition to certain words. 
but does, that doesn't necessarily mean that you know what the word is, you just know the definition of it. You don't always understand it. So the second thing is changing how you <coughs> teach. Now, um, the biggest thing is teaching material in its context rather than by itself. And by that, I mean rather than you know, telling students how to do something, you actually have them do it. You don't just like get all the way there and be like, oh yeah, class is over, like we're good. No, like you actually have them do it. So the best example that I can give for this is freshman year I took French one. And pretty much the class was just reading in a textbook, filling out worksheets, maybe looking at like, again, vocab, um, but not really ever using it. Sometimes we'd write sentences and like perform them in front of the class, but we weren't really ever using it. This year, that's pretty much all we do in French class. We speak and we have conversations to each other and we write stories and it's not just learning it, it's actually using it. So Michael Barada once said that failure is not a loss, it's a gain. You learn, you change, you grow. Rather than making kids think that failure is bad and that success is good, and that you know those are the only two ways to go, they can be the same thing. Our system of grading is very heavily built on pass-fail. If you pass, it kind of reflects that you're smart, that you know the content, and that you're ready to move on. But if you fail, it kind of reflects that, I hate to use the S word, but that maybe you're stupid, that you don't understand the material, and that you're not ready to move on. But that is not always the case, just because you don't, you can't pass a test doesn't mean you don't know the material in the class. So the third <coughs> thing is changing where we teach. Now, I think we can all relate to this photo maybe in our work lives or our school lives, clutter. We all hate clutter, right? So there was actually a study that was done by the Princeton Neuroscience Institute that talked about um, how clutter directly affects your ability to focus and be productive. This is what your average high school classroom probably looks like. Really small desks, really kind of close together, not really a lot of room to spread out. A lot of kids have, you know, a tablet, laptop, binder, notebook, and you have to cram all that in one little space. And teachers are like, why aren't you paying attention? It's like, well, I have no room to write my notes. Like, what do you expect from me? So we need to have bigger, I'm sorry, bigger spaces for kids to spread out and actually be able to be productive. So you may be thinking, isn't this going to be expensive? Because that's probably the first thing that comes to all of your minds. Um, the second is, won't it take too much time? And how do we know that it's the system's fault that kids are losing interest and not just you know, teenagers being teenagers? Well, um, this doesn't really require any new fancy equipment or you know, materials. We can really just repurpose what we have, but it's also a change in methods and a change in curriculum. That doesn't require you know, fancy microscopes or anything crazy like that. Um, every year, 1.2 million high school students drop out. To me, no matter how much time it takes to change this, that is worth it to bring that number down. I was speaking with another Baxter student about how they felt about their past um, high school experience before Baxter, and they were telling me that, you know, at their old school they felt like it was really heavy in reading and writing and, you know, memorizing facts and very, you know, integrated in that, and they didn't think that they would be able to go to college or do, you know, amazing things. And now um, that they're at Baxter, they said that I'm going to college next fall and I'm, I actually enjoy coming to school. Who would have thought? Um, I find what I'm learning to be useful and have purpose. So that is proof that students who were previously struggling in other environments are now thriving in schools that are, you know, like Baxter. So I want you to take a second and imagine a world where high school students are motivated, are ambitious, are excited to go to school, come home and are, you know, enthusiastic about what they learned, and more less students are dropping out. 
in the time that it took me to deliver this presentation, roughly 25 students made the decision to drop out of high school. We have the power to change that and to bring that number down. So my question is, why don't we? right off the bat was the amount of trust that teachers give students and it's not like you just have so much more freedom and you're not um, they're not necessarily teaching at the bottom of the class it's really more of like a one-on-one -on -one individual basis and that to me is just so much more motivating than being stuck in a room full of kids who just don't really care about what they're learning um, and also it's Flex Friday because I wouldn't have the opportunity to do this and talk about something that I'm really passionate about without Flex Friday Do you intend to put any of this to work in your own life? Um, I don't think so. I I don't really want to become a teacher. Like that's not a ambition of mine. Um, but I would love to further talk about this in even larger settings. That is definitely a life goal of mine. Um, because I'm really passionate about education reform. Brian. Um, I was just going to ask if you could connect it to the other Flex Friday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of have like two Flex Friday projects going on and the other one is um, XQ Super School Redesign which is basically a contest where we're redesigning the American High School um, for a grant which would go towards Baxter um, and we're, I've used both of my projects and like to each other and kind of using this to research what is, works better for students and what are more effective ways of learning. Um, With education reform, do you have an opinion about where control should lie? So, for example, should Brunswick be in local control of its own schools and Freeport be in control? Or do you see that control being better elsewhere at a different level? Like at a more national National level? or county or, or state? Or yeah, I mean, I think all schools are so different and communities are so different and like where I came from before my public school was in a very kind of smaller setting um, and now we're pulling from what 66 different towns so I think it is important to have it more local because then you can really get you can fit the needs of the students more than just kind of generalizing like mm -hmm. oh well they're high school students so I don't know like yeah I think more local is important to me. One more? Well, now, Morgan, if you don't want to throw out all of rope learning, do you like you know like <laughs> multiplication tables? I mean, like <laughs> like, what nine, you know what nine times seven is. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you.